like the term evolution, the term information, has more than one definition. And there is more than one type of information that might be present in living systems. Shannon's theory of information is something that you might be familiar with if you're a, an engineer or a software designer or uh, a mathematician. Claude Shannon was a mathematician and computer innovator in the, in the late 1940s, after World War II. And he developed a mathematical theory of information. He had a really interesting uh, intuition that underlay this, this idea. He wanted to be able to quantify how much information was in a, in a series of symbols along a communication channel. And his, his intuition was that, that information was related to the reduction in uncertainty provided by that sequence of symbols. So, for example, just to illustrate the intuition, if I tell you that in November in Seattle, it's going to rain. People who live in Seattle know that I haven't actually reduced much uncertainty. It always rains in Seattle. So that's not a very informative statement, at least to someone who lives in Seattle. If I tell you, however, the outcome of a closely contested baseball or football game that you didn't have the chance to, to watch, I have reduced a lot of uncertainty, and therefore I've given you an informative statement. This was Shannon's basic intuition. Information is related to the reduction in uncertainty. The more uncertainty reduced, the more information transmitted. Now, Shannon went beyond this information, or this intuition, rather, to quantify this relationship. For example, if I were to take a coin and flip it, there are two possible outcomes. There is the proverbial head and the proverbial tail. You've got two different possibilities. But if I take a die and I roll it, I've got six possible outcomes. So in the case of the die, once one outcome is fixed, I've eliminated five other possibilities, and therefore I've reduced more uncertainty than I have in the case of the coin flip. In the coin flip, I have eliminated one possibility when I've elected another. Only eliminating one out of two possibilities conveys less information, reduces less uncertainty. Notice that the amount of information or the amount of reduction of an uncertainty is inversely related to the probability of the event that occurs. In the case of the die, there were six possibilities. When one is fixed, I have eliminated five other possibilities, but the probability of that one being fixed was one in six. I've eliminated more uncertainty, elected more information in the case where the event itself was more improbable. In the case of the coin, I've only got two possibilities. So when one of the possibilities is fixed, I've eliminated one other possibility, but the probability of that one being fixed was only one out of two. So in the case where I have eliminated less uncertainty, produced more information, it's been the case where there, the probability of the event was smaller. So die smaller probability, more information conveyed. Coin, less information conveyed, less improbable. So the idea here is that information is inversely related to the probability of the event, which excludes other possibilities. Now, what's this, all this got to do with biology? Well, first of all, <clears throat> we need to understand that in Shannon information, there's a nice equation. And that equation is written in that it, con it connects these ideas of improbability and information. The classic Shannon equation is the information equals log to the base, the negative log to the base two of the probability of the event. So the more improbable the event, the higher the information measure. The less probable, the lower the information measure. Now, let's ask again the question, what does this all have to do with biology? Well, it is interesting because the coding system in DNA does lend itself to a, a mathematical analysis of the kind that Shannon gives. Because at each side along the DNA strand, there are four possible po four possibilities. You have the four different nucleotide bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine, A, T, C, and G. So anytime one of them is fixed, it eliminates three other possibilities, and therefore there's a calculable amount of Shannon information conveyed at each site along the growing DNA strand. But there's also a catch, because with Shannon information, you can't determine the difference between a functionally specified arrangement of characters or a meaningful arrangement of characters 
and, and an unspecified sequence, one that is essentially random or which has no meaning or no function. Shannon just gives you a measure of what's called the information carrying capacity. It doesn't tell you whether the information in the string of characters is meaningful or functional or not. Let me illustrate with these two strings of characters. The, the top string is essentially something that could be typed by monkeys at a typewriter. As far as we know, it's gibberish. It's just a series of characters that might be randomly produced. The bottom string, however, is something that we recognize right away as having meaning. The poetic phrase, time and tide wait for no man. The top string in information sciences is often referred to as a complex string. It's complex because it's not rigidly repeating. It's not ABC, 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 ABC over and over again. That kind of a string would be called a redundant or orderly string of characters. A complex string is one where you can't discern a repetitive pattern, and therefore it's complex, or also we could think of it as highly improbable. But the very bottom string, the time and tide wait for no man, is also complex. There's no re rigidly repeating pattern there. There's no ABC, ABC, ABC. But in addition to being complex, it also is specified. That is to say, it, it has the arrangement of the characters matters in order to allow it to perform a communication function or in order for it to convey meaning. So the key point here about Shannon information is that Shannon's measure of information carrying capacity can't distinguish between the functional and the non-functional strings of characters. So back to biology. What kind of information is in DNA? Well, the answer is actually both. There is a quantifiable amount of Shannon information, but the information in DNA is also functional. It directs the construction of proteins and protein machines. Francis Crick, who was well aware of the developments in the information sciences, in the field of information theory developed by Claude Shannon. Shannon was developing his ideas in 1947, 1948, 1949. Crick had been a code breaker in World War II, and so he was well aware of these developments, but he was also well aware of the limits of Shannon's information theory. And so Crick very carefully clarified what he and Watson meant by information in the case of DNA. In 1958, he wrote that by information, I mean the specification of the amino acid sequence in the protein. Or, he said, I mean by information he said, information here means the precise determination of sequence, either of bases in the nucleic acid or amino acid residues in the protein. In other words, he was saying that the information in DNA is specific. The, the, character, the arrangement of characters matters in that it allows the molecule to perform a communication function. So the kind of information we're talking about in DNA is not just Shannon information, not just the m information in the mathematical sense, of information carrying capacity. It's not just something related to improbability. The characters are improbable, but they're also specified or arranged precisely in order to perform a function. So the kind of information we're talking about in DNA is a much richer definition of information than the mere mathematical definition of information provided by Claude Shannon. In fact, it's much more similar to the kind of information that we use in everyday life, whether we're using English text or computer code. Webster's Dictionary defines information in the following way. It defines it as the attribute inherent in and communicated by alternative sequences of arrangements of something that produces specific effects. The alternative arrangement of something, in the case of English, would be alphabetic characters, and those produce a specific effect if they're arranged properly. They produce a communication effect. The information in DNA turns out to be that kind of information. And in my book, Signature in the Cell, I therefore make a distinction between Shannon information and its various synonyms like information carrying capacity or improbability of arrangement on the one hand and specified information or specified complexity or functional information, which would all be synonyms for Shannon information plus function or meaning. So the kind of information that we have in DNA and the, is similar, to, it is exactly the same in, this, in the theoretical sense in terms of these two categories of improbability plus function 
as the kind that we use in ordinary human language. That is to say, the kind of information present in DNA is also a striking appearance of design, because the kind of information that we use, functional or specified information, is always the product of a mind. Now, this has actually been recognized, this striking appearance of design, by none other than Richard Dawkins himself. He said that the machine code of the genes is uncannily computer-like, that apart from differences in jargon, the pages of a molecular biology journal might be interchanged with those of a computer engineering journal, that the information in DNA is like machine code in that it's improbable, but also functional. It ha performs a communication function. Bill Gates has amplified that observation, saying that DNA is like a software program, only much more complex than any we've ever created. So what explains the origin of the functional or specified information in DNA? As Dawkins and Gates imply, this kind of information, the kind of information in DNA, exhibits a striking appearance of design. What explains this striking appearance? Does natural selection and random mutation or some other undirected material process? In the next several sessions, we'll examine exactly this question, because it's the question that's at the heart of the question of the origin of life. We've seen that to explain the origin of new biological function, to explain the origin of life in the first place, you need lots of new proteins, and those proteins are built from the information stored in the DNA molecule. So we want to know where does that information come from? What explains that striking appearance of design? For now, I'd like you to read chapter 4, in Signature in the Cell, and especially focus on pages 84 through 99, which discuss this whole question of what kind of information is present in DNA.